I was going to try to edit this video using the software that I used to create this opening screen, which was uh, Pinnacle uh, Video Studio 14 by Avid before it was bought out by Corel. But I found it was just too limiting. I couldn't do voiceovers, and my God, was it ever slow. I'm used to the instant editing of Premiere Pro uh, CS6, which is what I use. So let's look at what I've got today. Another old, obsolete piece of equipment. In electronics over the years, there's been many scripts by companies that uh, should never have happened. Like, for example, when home video first hit the market, we should not have had two incompatible systems. I'm referring to, of course, Betamax and VHS. There should have only been one. And when DVD came out, there should have only been one format of DVD as well. And there was for playback, but in the recordable DVD, front there was actually four actually five five different types of disc dvd ram dvd plus r dvd plus rw dvd dash r and dvd dash rw when high definition discs first hit the market again we have to go through another standard war there was Blu-ray, which ultimately won. And then there was Toshiba's version. HD DVD. I was given this player. I don't have any HD DVD discs. So I can play an HD DVD. We're going to try playing some regular DVDs. And see what it will and will not play. Will this play an ABC HD disc for that matter? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Now, I have a uh, component out on this, and I'm just going to hook it up using the... Well, I guess I could hook it up. Doesn't sound healthy, does it? I can hook it up to my uh, my HD LCD TV here, because I have an HDMI cable. But uh, I just want to see what this thing can and can't do, and then we're going to take it apart and see what's inside it. So, plugged in. Let me get a power cable. Using a polarized cable, which I... Just so happened that I have one. Obviously, this is not going to play Blu-ray discs, but I'm curious as to whether it will play, if it even works, whether it will play a high-definition recording recorded on a DVD dash R. I turn this thing on and it makes a racket. It's got a fan on the back. It's noisy, but. I'm not getting any image on my TV. Okay, after it running for a couple minutes, I get this menu on the screen. Okay, finally, after about two minutes, it uh, started up. I sat there looking at no signal for almost two minutes. I'm just going to try different types of discs in here and see what it will and will not play. So this is an AVC HD disc. It's recorded in HD. And that's recorded onto a, a DVD plus R in a, a dual layer. Let's just see if it will read this disc. And it won't. So it won't read ABC HD. But my Sony Blu-ray players will read them just fine. And here's another disc. This is an audio disc that I'm trying to play. But it's recorded on a CDR. And uh, it won't play this CDR disc. It will play this brand of CDR. So it'll play one of the dark, the dark green or dark blue CDRs. It'll play that, okay. So I'm sure it'll play a regular stamped audio CD. And I'm sure it's gonna play a regular DVD as well. Let's see if it's going to play a DVD-R. Oh, looks like it's gonna play that one too. So that's good. Abstract air, air show. 
1985, I believe. This is the raw footage taken right off of my beta, uh, beta camera. This has been a tube camera from all those reflections. Okay, so this will play, it'll play HD DVD, regular DVD, and audio CD. And I want to see how well this thing's built and see what's inside it. Oh, it's got a little plug on the back. It looks like somebody's added that after the fact. wonder what that's for. Anyway, let's pull this thing apart and take a look inside. I've never seen one of these ones before. To say it was given to me. I don't have much use for it. I guess it might be worthwhile to hang on to in case someone hands me an HD DVD disc. I would imagine it does use a blue type laser for HD DVD, but obviously it's not compatible with Blu-ray because that was a competing system. And I remember when this came out, and there were some people were backing it they figured that this was going to be the format and it was going to beat they were going to beat Sony again that's what they figured they were going to beat Sony but it didn't happen this time and look at that it's got looks like well it's not an IDE drive I was thinking it was an IDE drive but it's not it's an HD DVD ROM but it's got a different interface August 2007 Somebody's added this. What the heck is it? I think what someone's done is they put a they put an LED in there for a remote control. I think that's what somebody has done here. Somebody has, I bet if I pop this apart, I'm gonna find that somebody has put an infrared emitter right into this cabinet. Am I right? Is that what's been done? Absolutely. Check that out. Somebody put an infrared emitter right next to and stuck it in place with hot glue right next to the actual receiver. Cool. And I can take that out now because that's something that I could use. I mean, I, I stoop as low as just sticking them on the front with, with some tape, not opening up the unit itself and putting an infrared right into the, uh, the set, but somebody went the extra mile there, drilled a hole in the back. And mounted it right inside the set. Let's take out this this uh, HD DVD ROM drive. Take a look at it. Maybe even take it apart. They've poured epoxy over the pins on this chip. Never seen that done before. I've seen them pour epoxy over a chip so that you don't see what the number is but to pour it over the pins on one side that one's new to me Okay, there's the drive. 
want to open this drive up. And if you're wondering, is this going to go back together? I'll try to put it together. But uh, hopefully I won't damage it. But if I do, oh well. I'm not too worried about it. As I say, it's not something that uh, I would go out of my way to find. So there's the optical pickup. Take the top off it. I like to try and run it with the top off if it can. I don't know if the clamp is in the top or not. I guess I won't be able to run it with the top off, but there it does have two separate lasers. As you can see, check it out. There's two lenses. So it's going to have, I'm sure, a conventional red laser and it's going to have a blue laser. For the two different types of discs. I'll probably power this thing up. Plug it in and power it up with the top off. We can try powering this up. I'm sure it will uh, power up okay. This uses a class 2 laser. Oh, did we see a laser light up there? I think we did. What, what lit up there? Looks like a blue laser and a red laser and an infrared laser. Cool. Let's do that again. Okay. So, I'm not putting my eyes anywhere near this. So there's the blue laser, a red laser, and then the infrared. And if I turn off the infrared cut filter, Put it in night shot mode, in other words. We should see three distinct lasers. There's the blue laser, the red laser, and the infrared laser. So it actually has three laser pickups. Blue, red, and infrared. I wonder what happens if I put a Blu-ray disc in here. Whether it will actually try to spin up or whether it will just ignore it. It actually is going to spin up, but it won't. obviously it's not going to play it. And if you notice, the red laser is now coming on. So it, it did detect it as a, a Blu-ray type disc or an HD DVD. Tried to read it, nothing happened, and then it turned the red laser on. As we'll see, I'll do it again. Watch, momentarily you'll see the blue laser come on. There it is, and it's going to, going to go to red. So it did try to it did try to spin up, but obviously it won't read a Blu-ray disc. It's not a Blu-ray player, but it did try to spin the disc up momentarily. Interesting because I thought that just it was weird to see this one chip epoxy, but look, they've done it to more than one. That chip's epoxyed in, as is the flash memory over here. The flash memory is is epoxyed in. So obviously they don't want anybody taking that chip out and trying to clone it or copy it. They're doing this to protect the code that's on the chip. They don't want anybody reading that code. And this might have been not so much to stop someone from reading the code, but maybe they were concerned that because this is probably where the, the decryption keys are stored and they were more concerned about people um, hacking it, reprogramming the chip to get past in, uh, security. So rather than, you know, try to protect the chip with, say, a volatile memory, where if you removed it, it would lose the battery that held the, the uh, code in the chip, they're using flash memory, but they just figured they would, it's easier just to epoxy it down so that you can't remove the chip. Anyway, um, I'm going to put this thing back together, and fingers crossed it will still work. And that'll be it for this. I'll put this away and put it into my collection of obsolete players and you never know if someone hands me a an HD DVD disc I'll be able to play it so let's just uh, throw this one back together a few years ago I guess it would have been around the time that this was still current I um, it would have been 2006 maybe 
Uh, it was either 2006 or 2007. I'm going to say it was 2007. I was trying to trying to think what year it was, but um, 2000 and uh, was it 2006? It might have been 2006. Either 2006 or 2007. I went on a little vacation myself and uh, went up to Alaska and stuff. Drove up there. It was on a photography trip. And I stopped by an old an old friend's place. Guy that I had worked with. Um, he had worked for Sony. And uh, then he worked when, when he left Sony. He worked at the shop that I worked at in the sales department. He had actually been he had actually been our Sony sales rep at the time. And uh, when he left Sony, he came to work for the shop that I worked for for several years. And then he left because he wanted to start his own business. And he, he started his own stereo shop up in, was in uh, the West Bank of Kelowna. I think it was in the West Bank, up there anyway. And I dropped by to see him. I was coming back. I saw his store right on the main drag, so I dropped in to see him. And he wasn't there when I got there, but he showed up. He's had a good chit-chat. And he was, he was a big promoter of HD DVD. And at the time, I, I said, you know, they're going to get killed. Blu-ray is going to kill it. And, of course, back then, they were still believers. They were, they were still... They were still believing what Toshiba was telling them that that uh, that, that HD DVD was going to become the standard, and that it was going to it was going to uh, it was going to beat Blu-ray out because all the studios were going to release movies on HD DVD, and the adult film industry had selected HD DVD as their format of choice for high definition and uh, I guess they hadn't heard of the internet but that they figured that was going to save the format and uh, he was telling me that uh, Toshiba had bet everything they had bet everything on HD DVD and well it didn't happen HD DVD was uh, abandoned shortly after that I think it was probably abandoned probably shortly after this I don't know what year exactly uh, HD DVD went down but it couldn't have been much after this the date was February 19th 2008 when Toshiba abandoned the format but rumors I heard was it it pretty much spelled the end of Toshiba as far as consumer electronics they had sunk so much money into HD DVD and then the format fizzled and it won't play mp3 disc either put an mp3 disc and I just get that message and it says this disc is not in DVD format on the TV. So it really is quite limited as to what it can play. It can play regular DVD, audio CD, and the now obsolete HD DVD format. That's too bad because you know it actually is quite a nice looking player inside. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.